Joshua chapter 11. When Jabin, king of Hazor, heard of this, he sent word to Jobab, king of Madon, to the kings of Shimron and Akshaph, and to the northern kings who were in the mountains, in the Arabah south of the Kinnereth, in the western foothills, and in the Naphoth door on the west, to the Canaanites in the east and west, to the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, and Jebusites in the hill country, and to the Hivites below the below Hermon in the region of Mizpah. They came out with all their troops and a large number of horses and chariots, a huge army, as numerous as the sand on the seashore. All these kings joined forces and made camp together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them, because by this time tomorrow I will hand all of them over to Israel, slain. <laughs> you are to hamstring their horses and burn their chariots. So Joshua and his whole army came against them suddenly at the waters of Merom and attacked them. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Israel. They de defeated them and pursued them all the way to greater Sidon, to Misrephoth Maim, and to the valley of Mizpah on the east, until no survivors were left. Joshua did to them as the Lord had directed. He hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots. At that time, Joshua turned back and captured Hazor and put its king to the sword. Hazor had been the head of all the kingdoms. Everyone in it, they put to the sword. They totally destroyed them, not sparing anything that breathed, and he burned up Hazor itself. Joshua took all these royal cities and their kings and put them to the sword. He totally destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. Yet Israel did not burn any of the cities built on their mounds, except Hazor, which Joshua burned. The Israelites carried off for themselves all the plunder and livestock of these cities, but all the people they put to the sword until they completely destroyed them, not sparing anyone that breathed. As the Lord commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua, and Joshua did it. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took this entire land, the hill country, all the Negev, the whole region of Goshen, the western foothills, the Arabah, and the mountains of Israel, with their foothills from Mount Halak, which rises from Sair to Baal Gad, Gad in the valley of Lebanon below Mount Hermon. He captured all their kings and struck them down, putting them to death. Joshua waged war against all these kings for a long time. Except for the Hivites living in Gibeon, not one city made a treaty of, treaty of peace with the Israelites who took them all in battle. For it was the Lord himself who hardened their hearts to wage war against Israel so that he might destroy them totally, exterminating them without mercy, as the Lord had commanded Moses. At that time, Joshua went and destroyed the Anna Anakites from the hill country, from Hebron, Deber, and Anab, from all the hill country of Judah, and from all the hill country of Israel. Joshua totally destroyed them and their towns. No Anakites were left in Israel, in Israelite territory. Only in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod did any survive. So Joshua took the entire land, just as the Lord had directed Moses, and he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal divisions. Then the land had rest from war. Joshua chapter 12. These are the kings of the land whom the Israelites had defeated and whose territory they took over east of the Jordan, from the Arnon Gorge to Mount Hermon, including all the eastern side of the Arabah. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, he ruled from Aurora on the rim of the Arnon Gorge from the middle of the gorge to the Jabbok River, which is the border of the Ammonites. This included half of Gilead. He also ruled over the eastern Araba from the Sea of Kinnerath to the Sea of the Araba, the Salt Sea, to Beth Jeshemoth, and then southward below the slopes of Pisgah. And the territory of Og, king of Bashan, one of the last of the Rephaites, who reigned in Ashtara and Edre. He ruled over Mount Hermon, Salika, all the Bashan, to the border of the people of Geshur and Makkah, and, 
the half of Gilead to the border of Sihon, king of Heshbon. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the Israelites conquered them. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave their land to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh to be their possession. These are the kings of the land that Joshua and the Israelites conquered on the west side of the Jordan, from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon to Mount Halak, which rises towards Sair. Their lands Joshua gave as an inheritance to the tribes of Israel according to their tribal divisions, the hill country, the western foothills, the Areba, the mountain slopes, the desert, and the Negev, the lands of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. The king of the king of Jericho won. Oh, they're all they're all one. <laughs> the king of Jericho, the king of Ai, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, the king of Gezer, the king of Deber, the king of Geder, the king of Horma, the king of Arad, the king of Libna, the king of Adullam, the king of Makeda, the king of Bethel. The king of Tapua, king of Hefer, the king of Aphek, the king of Lasharon, the king of Madon, the king of Hazar, the king of Shimron, Meron, the king of Akshaph, the king of Tanakh, the king of Megiddo, the king of Kedesh, the king of Jachnaim in Carmel, the king of Dor in Naphtoth Dor, the king of Goyim in Gilgal, the king of Terzah, 31 kings in all. Joshua chapter 13. When Joshua was old and well advanced in years, the Lord said to him, You are very old, and there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. This is the land that remains. All the regions of the Philistines and Geshurites, from the Shihor River on the east side of Egypt to the territory of Ekron on the north, all of it counted as Canaanite, the territory of the five Philistine rulers in Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron, and that of the Avites. From the south, all the land of the Canaanites from Era and the Sidonites, Sidonians from as far as the Aphek, the region of the Amorites, the area of the Gebelites, and all Lebanon to the east, from Baal Gad, Mount, below Mount Hermon, to Lebo Hamath. As for all the inhabitants of the mountain regions from Lebanon to Misrephoth, Maim, that is, all the Sidonians, I myself will drive them out before the Israelites. <laughs> wow. Be sure to allocate this land to Israel for an inheritance, as I have instructed you, and divide it as an inheritance among the nine tribes and half of the tribe of Manasseh. The other half of Manasseh, the Reubenites and the Gadonites, had received the inheritance that Moses had given them east of the Jordan, as he, the servant of the Lord, had assigned it to them. It extended from Orar on the rim of the Arnon Gorge and from the town in the middle of the gorge, and included the whole plateau of Mediba as far as Dibon and all the towns of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon, out to the border of the Ammonites. It also included Gilead, the territory of the people of Gesher and Maka, all the Mount, all of Mount Hermon, and all Bashan as far as Seca, Salica, sorry, that is the whole kingdom of Og in Bashan, who had reigned in Ashtaroth and Edrei, and had survived as one of the last of the Rephaites. Moses had defeated them and taken over their land, but the Israelites did not drive out the people of Gesher and Maka. So they continue to live among the Israelites to this day. But to the tribe of Levi, he gave no inheritance since the offerings made by fire to the Lord, the God of Israel, are their inheritance as he promised them. This is what Moses had given to the tribe of Reuben, clan by clan. The territory from Orar on the rim of the Arnon Gorge and from the town in the middle of the gorge and from the whole plateau past Medeba to Heshbon and all of its towns on the plateau, including Dibon, Bamoth, Baal, Beth, Baal, Maon, Jahaz, Kedemoth, Meth, Mephath, Kiriathim, Sibma, Zareth, Shihar, on the hill and the valley, 
Beth Peor, the slopes of the Pisgah, and Beth Jeshimoth, all the towns of the plateau and the entire realm of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who ruled at Heshbon. Moses had defeated him and the Midianite chiefs, Evi, Rechem, Zer, Hur, and Reba, princes allied with Sihon who lived in that country. In addition to those slain in battle, the Israelites had put to the sword Balaam, son of Beor, who practiced divination. The boundary of the Reubenites was the bank of the Jordan. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the Reubenites, clan by clan. This is what Moses had given to the tribe of Gad, clan by clan. The territory of Jazer, all the towns of Gilead, and the half of the and half the Ammonite country, as far as Orar, near Reba, and from Heshbon to Ramath, Mizpah, and Betnaim, and from Mahanaim to the territory of Deber, and in the valley Beth Haram, Beth Nimrah, Succoth, Zephron, with the east of the realm of Sihon, king of Heshbon, the east side of the Jordan, the territory up to the end of the Sea of Kinnereth. These towns and their villages were the inheritance of the Gadites, clan by clan. This is what Moses had given to the half-tribe of Manasseh, that is, to half the family of the descendants of Manasseh, clan by clan. The territory extending from Mana Mahanaim and included all of Bashan, the entire realm of Og, king of Bashan, all the settlements of Jair and Bashan, 60 towns, half of Gilead and Ashtara and Edrei, the royal cities of Og in Bashan. This was for the descendants of Macher, son of Manasseh, for half of the sons of Macher, clan by clan. This is the inheritance Moses had given when he was in the plains of Moab across the Jordan east of Jericho. But to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance as he promised them.